All right, we've laid out all the views. It is now time to add dimensions. That is under the annotation tab. The annotation tab allows us to use dimensions. If you hit dimensions, there's several different types. We'll just go to dimension. Select this line and this line. Whoops, I didn't pick on it. Grab this line and this line. Ah, oh, I missed it. I hit Control Z to do an undo. Grab this line and this line, and I'll put a dimension in there. I'll do an undo on that. I'm going to grab this line here. I'll grab. I'm going to try something here. Use the control button. I'm going to grab these two lines. And I'm going to go to dimension. And unfortunately, it turns it off the lines I had selected. So I got to go back and manually grab these lines. Click a position. Great. Another dimension that will represent the width. This dimension here will represent the depth and a dimension on this bottom line here will represent the uh, length or depth of the part. So depth, this is depth or length, this is your width, and this is your height. Make sure you always have height are length, width, and height defined on your drawings. If nothing else, if you can't figure out what dimensions to have, you definitely need length, width, and height. Now, under dimension, I also need the diameter callout, which is this here. And the problem with the diameter callout is it gives it to me in ISO specs. I need this in ANSI specs. So what we do is we right click on this and we go to properties. These arrowheads are known as symbols. So when I go to uh, look through the tabs, I'm looking for something that says symbol on it. too far. So when I hit dimension line, I found the tab called dimension line in the pop-up window. Under dimension line you'll see that there's a symbol one here in the middle of the pop-up window and then there's a symbol two. You notice that symbol two has got a check mark on it. You click on symbol two and the check mark goes away. When I hit apply, you'll notice that it'll switch it to one arrowhead. All right. The other issue is, I'll select OK here. The other issue is when I grab this, these white arrows to move this up, we need a horizontal line coming off of that. ISO standards has a straight line going to the dimension. ANSI and ASME specs has a horizontal line. So you're learning ISO, ANSI, and ASME all at once here. We'll go to Properties. And I want to get the horizontal line that goes to the 0.08 dimension. In order to do that under Representation, in the pop-up window, it's the same tab as before dimension line instead of a regular what so calls regular we want to do two parts the two parts are if you look at this picture closely on your screens you'll see a line and then a horizontal line so when I click on that and hit apply this line is one part and this line over here is two parts and that's why it says two parts here this line here that's horizontal, you can click on it. Sorry, I'll hit OK. 
You can click on this horizontal line and drag it up to locate it. Notice I didn't change the length. The length of that horizontal line is standard. You should keep it the, the same as it always is. All right. This dimension again has to be a single arrowhead, one symbol. Horizontal shoulder is the ANSI ASME spec. All right. Next thing, we need a dimension on this corner. Okay. I'm going to click a position and again right click properties. Change your symbol to a single arrowhead and add the shoulder. Do you remember what the steps were? Click the symbol. Change regular to two part. Hit apply. Select OK. It looks like it did it. And then we're going to grab this red triangle and uh, trying to escape out of this shoot okay let's try that again I'm gonna grab this shoulder here and move this up here now the circle with the diameter sorry circle with the slash means it's a diameter this is actually a radius, so we're going to right click on this and go to properties. No, sorry. We're going to right click on this and go to dimension object, and we're going to swap the callout to a radius callout. Remember, only if it's a full circle, if it's a hole, do you give a diameter. If it's a radius, then, or if it's anything other than a full circle, we want to give a radius call out. All right. Not only do I want to change that to radius call out, but there's four of them. So I want to indicate that I have four of these by clicking on this and selecting the red triangle, and we'll type in 4x. Hit enter. Notice that this dimension went right through that horizontal line that represented the shoulder. Remember, this horizontal line is called a shoulder. So you got to take that text and move it over to the right to give it enough room. And we want to try and make this shoulder and this shoulder look the same length. Okay. All right. It may look like you're done dimensioning, but we're missing anything. Can you see what dimensions we're missing? We are missing a dimension from the end of the center line, uh, end of the center line to this line over here. I'll click a position. I need that dimension to locate the hole. I know what size the hole is, but I don't know where it's at. So again, you need to do a dimension from the bottom line to this center line. Make sure you grab the end of that center line. See the gaps I have here? It's important to maintain those gaps. Now where I have radiuses, it's not going to like those gaps. Or it's not going to give me the gaps. This should be the gaps we have. But I'm not getting those gaps where there's radiuses. So what I have to do is I have to alter those to be bigger. Okay, so we'll get into that here in a minute. Oh, the next problem I bet you're wondering this whole time is these dimensions don't look right. We made a two by four with a one inch hole in the middle and quarter or half inch radiuses. Well, what happens is it defaults this to put them in feet. So we're going to change this. And how I do that is I just highlight everything, go to one of the dimensions and go to properties by doing a right, right click, 
properties select on one of the dimensions and do a right click properties and it will get them all and we got to find something that will change these values if I hit value the reason why I knew to hit value is that all these numbers they're called values so this being a value says it's in uh, feet and inches I'm going to click on this and I'm going to num dink it that stands for uh, numbers in dimension inches so I click on that and hit apply and you see them all change to inches I'll select OK click off in no man's land now I've got all my dimensions to inches I do that very last instead of changing them all one at a time I just get them all done at once at the end when I'm done dimensioning now we're not quite done here's why this two inch dimension that dimension line should line up with this dimension line over here what you could do is go to view and turn on your grid it makes it kinda easier to work with now what is my grid set up to well let's go to our legacy preferences and look for machining and then drafting in the specification tree Whoa, mechanical I meant uh, mechanical and then drafting this is ANSI ASME this is set to inches display Oh, I forgot what I was even, what was I trying to show you? Oh, I want to set up the grid spacing. So I want that to be quarter inch increments. I'll change that to four. One inch and four. And I'll switch that to OK. All right, so it kind of helps me do a few things. What I'm going to do here is go back turn on that view frame. I'm going to grab the edge of that view frame and I'm going to move this to be right on a grid. Not to be perfect, but just kind of on the grid. So when I go to move this down, I know I'm about half inch. Let's call that, that'd be about a half inch. And this one here should be a quarter inch apart, like that. So this line here is where this two should be, right about here. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of use that grid to help me line that up. So now I know the two is lined up directly across. All right, I notice that that one is pretty tight so I'm gonna move the one out just a little this is basically at the zero that would be basically a quarter inch and then like right about the middle probably about half inch we can move this over just a hair we need to make room for the two in this line to not be touching we need to have some clarity on that so that's why I use the grid to help me line up everything when you're done you can turn the grid off and I feel like my dimensions are getting a little close to the border remember when you grab the primary view it moves all the views now I feel like that's pretty clean so I've got all my dimensions on this part everything's all lined up nice and pretty I can go ahead and turn off the frame and we're just about done I'm gonna do a view fit all in and then uh, before I save this you see that blue axis I want that blue axis to be on this bottom left corner and how I do that is I right click on sheet one and hit edit sheet and it shifts that blue axis to the bottom here so when I make a print of the drawing that's not on the screen anywhere it's off to the side doesn't want it, you don't want it on there for people to look at it's just kind of messy so 
we have created the border, edited a title block, we've inserted the views, we've dressed up the views, and we've now applied dimensions. The next step will be to put on text and label the views in the next video.